How's it going everybody? Dato Doi here with a very different bonus video for you all today, as in today's video we're going to be going over the Dragon Ball Super card game, and more specifically, the new Crimson Saiyan starter deck that just came out recently. I will say right away, this video is definitely going to be aimed at people that are either brand new to this card game, or have never even heard of it before and are looking to get into it. So if you're somebody who's already well versed in the rules of this game, and already know what they're looking for, then this video probably isn't going to be the video for you. Speaking personally, I've been into the Dragon Ball Super card game for a little while now, but more on the side of being a collector than somebody that actually plays the game. But recently that started to shift for me as I've been playing more with my friends recently, and the game's actually proven to be a lot of fun. I'm not really at the level of going out and playing in local tournaments yet, but I've definitely been having a lot of fun playing with my friends. And this starter deck has actually proven to me to be a lot of fun to use, while also being super easy to get into, which is why I chose to do this video in the first place. I actually do want to say thank you to the Dragon Ball Super card game. They posted this giveaway slash promotion for YouTubers, where if you enter there was a chance you could get chosen to have this starter deck as well as five colossal warfare packs sent to you and i actually entered because someone in the comments told me about it and i ended up winning and having this get sent to me it was it's actually one of the coolest moments so far that's come from doing youtube and i couldn't be more thankful for that so thank you to both the dragon ball super card game and of course that commenter for making this happen i've been wanting to cover this card game for so long and i'm just so happy that this is how it's happened so now with that introduction and sentimental stuff out of the way we can actually get to covering the starter deck and why i think it's such a great place to start with this game i know this sounds weird but we're going to go ahead and skip over the cards for now and talk about what else it comes with. So as well as the cards inside your starter deck pack, you'll also find a play manual which goes over a lot of the rules of the game, and you'll also get a play mat like the one you see here. Now I do want to stress that a playmat for this game is actually pretty important when you're a newcomer. It's not like Yu-Gi-Oh! or Pokemon where you can just lay the cards down and you have very limited amount of important spaces to keep track of. So in Yu-Gi-Oh! for example, you'll have your monster zone and then your spell cards and maybe a graveyard and where you put your deck. In this game, you have your life, your deck, your battle area, combo area, energy area, and like a graveyard equivalent. So it can get very confusing if you're a newcomer. And this playmat actually helps a lot. I know when I first started out, I tried playing without a playmat and I got so confused that I just went out and got one. It was definitely way easier for me and my friends. There's also the added on benefit that on the back of the playmat, they go over all sorts of other rules, keywords you should be aware of, terms. It's pretty much like a handy tutorial if you ever get lost during a game. Like I said back when I was starting this helped me a lot as I could just turn it over and if I saw a keyword or term I didn't know I would just look it up on YouTube really quick or on their website and go see a guide. With those two things out of the way now all we have left to do is talk about the cards of the pack which is probably going to be the main reason you choose one starter deck over another and this is definitely my favorite starter deck by far and that is because of the swap mechanic they've implemented in this which is actually pretty new to the game. Before we get into too much detail on that though, so let's go ahead and start with your leader card, Golden Grade Ape Son Goku. Now of course like other leader cards, when this card attacks a leader card, you get to draw one card. And that's pretty much it for this form, but like all other leader cards in the game, once you meet a certain requirement, you can actually awaken this card. In the case for Golden Grade Ape Son Goku, when your life is at 4 or less, you may choose up to 2 of your energy, switch them to active mode, and flip this card over. Once you do that, your card becomes Long Odds Super Saiyan 4 Son Goku. Obviously, this is the much better version of the card, because when your life is less than or equal to your opponent's life, which you know there's a good chance of happening consider you just awaken, so you're at 4 health, this card is able to gain 5000 power and critical. Now what critical means is that when you hit your opponent, instead of just drawing from their life, they actually have to put it in their drop area or their graveyard. So that's obviously a very good effect to have. It allows you to put damage on your opponent without them being able to have access to that built-in comeback factor of drawing whenever you get hit. Super good. The next card in the deck is Reborn Might Super Saiyan 4 Son Goku, and I actually really like this one as well, although it is super risky and it's kind of a late game card. Its effect is that once per turn you can choose one card from your life and add it to your hand. Switch this card to active mode, and if you have two or less life, this card gains triple strike. And that basically means that this card, whenever it attacks, inflicts three damage instead of one. So in this game, you have seven life, so one card doing three damage to an, a leader is almost like one card taking half of your opponent's life away. Now, of course, this does require you to have two or less life, meaning you're on your last legs as well, but the card does make for a really good way to seal a game away. The next card being Power Charge Bardock really does continue this factor of being insanely good, only this one is far less risky, so I think you're actually going to want to run four of these guys in a deck. His auto effect is that when this card attacks, you may either draw one card, and if you didn't draw a card with that skill, then this card gains double strike, meaning this card does two damage instead of one. For a card that only costs three energy, that's an insanely good effect, and you don't even have to use that. If you're not in a position where you want to go for damage, then you can always just use the card to increase your hand advantage. Unfortunately, while you want to run four, we only get two in this starter deck. 
After Bardock, we have Super Saiyan Blue Son Goku at the Apex. This is a 5 cost card, but it really does prove its worth with having both Barrier, which stops it from being chosen by skills of your opponent's card, meaning it's going to stay on the field for a while, and it also comes with Double Strike, again, that meaning that it inflicts 2 damage instead of 1 when attacking. And it doesn't stop there because it also has the auto effect of when you play this card, if your leader's card is Goku's Lineage, which ours is, it's Super Saiyan 4 Goku, then we can choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and KO it, meaning we just get rid of it right away. Overall, it's a really good 5 drop that really synergizes with the deck, as well as having barrier meaning it's going to stay on the field and pose a threat for a long time. The next card is kind of like a lighter threat version of this, that being Ultimate Potential Super Saiyan 2 Son Gohan, who is a 3 drop who has the auto effect that when you play this card, choose up to one of your opponent's rest mode battle cards and KO it. Oh. Okay. I've always been a big fan of cards that come in and just pop something right away, so this card definitely sits well with me, as well as being a swap card, meaning it's going to get your swap engine running, which I promise we're going to talk more about in this next card here. That card being Dependable Dynasty Sun Goku, a 2-drop card who only has the effect Swap 3. So now we're going to talk more about the swap mechanic of the deck, which I've been ignoring up until this point now, because it only gets really relevant now, and this is just a super easy case of how to learn it. So what we have here is a 2-drop card, Dependable Dynasty Sun Goku, who has the the effect swap 3. You'll see two yellow dots next to him meaning that if for the cost of two yellow energy and by taking him off of the battle area and back into your hand, you'll be able to play a Goku's Lineage card that has a cost of 3, meaning that Gohan card we had back there can come out and replace him. And you'll see on the Goku card he has swap 4, meaning if you have two more energy, you can take Gohan out and put a 4-drop card out. This is really where the deck starts to open up and you start to have a lot of fun with combos and what you want to do and what you want to go out for. In fact, the reason I chose this card to talk more about the swap mechanic is because there's also another 3-drop example, that being Indomitable Dynasty Super Saiyan Son Goku. Now, much like Gohan, he as well is a 3-drop who you can swap into for the same cost, but instead of being a card that pops something, he has barrier, meaning you have the choice to either go aggressive in your swap or super defensive. Either option is going to allow you to swap into a 4-drop unit later, but you have to make that choice. So it's going to depend from game to game what you're going to go for here. Like I said, that's kind of my favorite part about this deck is that the fact you get to swap in and out and it really influences your plays and it changes from game to game, so it's a lot of fun. Our next card is Unbroken Dynasty Son Goku, who again is only a swap card. He's just swapped two. For one energy, you can swap back into a different two drop. Uh, not really too much to say about this guy, so we can just move on. I believe our next card, Dynasty Deferred Son Goku, is our first four drop that has a swap five effect, which is going to allow us to get some of our beefier boys like Super Saiyan Blue onto the field. But unlike some of the last few cards, he also has some other effects under his belt, such as Barrier, again, going to stick around for a while, and he also has auto, which means at the end of our turn, we get to change this card back into active mode. Our next card is very simple and sweet. We have Intrepid Dynasty Son Gohan, who is a two cost card who can swap three for two yellow energy, and also comes with barriers super early, meaning that the opponent isn't going to be able to put a stop to our swapping at a very early stage. This card is very important in terms of getting those gears started when it comes to this starter deck. Our next card, Prodigal Dynasty Son Goten, is actually something a little different from the rest as he's actually something super useful for comboing. Now, if you don't know what comboing is, when somebody attacks your card or when you attack, you get a chance to combo with other cards to increase the power of the card you're attacking with or the card that's being attacked. So in this case, when you combo with Goten, if one of your yellow cards is being attacked, this card gains 10,000 combo power for the duration of this turn, meaning you're adding on 15,000 attack to a card that you don't want to lose. Super clutch when you want to stop yourself from taking damage. Our next card also plays with this combo mechanic a little, that being Plucky Dynasty Pan. Now she also does have the swap 5, but really you just want to use her for super combo, as when you combo with this card, if your leader card is yellow, Goku Lineage, and your life is at 4 or less, you get to draw one card, and this card gains 10,000 combo power for the duration of the turn. Really, I don't use this card too much, but when I do combo with it, it is pretty good. Our next card is actually much simpler to understand, that being Dynasty Solace Chi Chi. Now when you play this card, you get to look at the top 3 cards of your deck, choose one Goku's Lineage card from among them, and add it to your hand. Super simple, easy to use search, that gives you some more advantage and allows you to get some swap cards going. And our next card, Adoptive Father Son Gohan, is what really gets the swap mechanics started from the ground up. He's our first one drop who has the ability to swap two, and he's also a blocker, which means when one of your other cards is attacked, you may switch this card to rest mode and change the target of the attack to this card. Overall pretty useful, and he gets the swap mechanics started. Our next card is an effect card and really takes advantage of our leader's ability to end a game, and this card only and this card only makes him that much better on this front, that being 10 times Kamehameha. If your leader card is Goku's Lineage with Son Goku, Goku and its character name, ours is, 
it gains 15,000 power and double strike. Your opponent is going to have a hard time stopping this attack from going through, as well as the fact that we get multiple copies of 10 times Kamehameha, so at the end of a game, if you have a couple in your hand, you can pretty much seal the deal right there. Our last card is also really good, that being Instant Transmission. It allows us to negate attacks, and if our leader card is Goku's Lineage, when you activate this card, and counter, you may choose one card in your life and add it to your hand, and if you do so, you may activate this card's counter without paying its energy cost. So if you want to use this card without using an energy, you can just take some life away. Really good stuff to stopping a double strike or a triple strike attack from going through. Really, really like this card. And that brings us to an end for our deck overview for the new Crimson Saiyan starter deck. I actually really do enjoy this one. It's a lot of fun to use. Obviously, you could probably get some better. Obviously, you could get some better results from mixing and matching two copies of the same deck together. I would really love to run four of that Bardock card, for example. But this deck isn't bad either. I would say it's definitely my favorite starter deck so far and has really gotten me inspired to even make some more meta decks of my own. Let me know your thoughts on the Dragon Ball Super card game and this deck down in the comments below. While you're down there, if you like these types of videos and want to see more like this make sure to leave a like and subscribe and again i want to thank the dragon ball super card game for sending this stuff out to me it's a lot of fun they also sent me five packs here's the here's what i pulled i was gonna do an opening video but my camera really sucked and my audio sucks so it was just awful but here's my pulls it was a lot of fun thank you so much again for the dragon ball super card game for sending this stuff out to me thank you again so much for watching i'm dato doya i'll see you in the next video